When I was a kid, we used to compare footballing abilities in a very simple way. The best player was the one with the most powerful shot. Fast forward 20 years or so and Puma have actually made a boot created to give you a more powerful strike. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the Puma Evo Power 1.3, which is the third generation of the Evo Power, continuing the thought of giving you a more powerful strike by allowing your foot to move and bend naturally. But is it more of the same, or is there a big evolution behind the new Evo Power? Get it? All right, I'll get my coat. The big deal is once again the Adaplide upper that still stretches one way to allow your foot to bend backwards when you shoot. And Puma also borrowed some learnings from the Evo accuracy with the AccuFoam inserts. Placed on the inside of the boot, they're able to mold around your foot and even out the uneven surfaces to give you more accuracy. Because you don't have to be a scientist to figure out that power is pretty much useless if you don't hit the target which I wish someone told me 10 years ago. The Adaplite Upper is amazing for one reason though. It is ridiculously soft straight out of the box. Actually, it's so soft that it reminds me a little bit of a leather boot that's been worn for years because it moves extremely well with the foot without having any real pressure points. And it's like Puma took and combined the best stuff from the Evo Power 1 and the 1.2 because the upper is soft, padded, and slightly airy without having any of the real bulk from the Evo Power 1, but with a more flexible Adaplite upper than the Evo Power 1.2. Obviously, that helps quite a bit when it comes to the fit. And thanks to the AccuFoam, it quickly mimics the shape of your foot, which feels like the boot has known your feet for a while. It is rather white though, so for white-footed people, it is the boot to go to. But still, because of the fact that the AccuFoam sits on the inside of the boot, you can still pull your laces tight and get a close, great fit, even if you have a narrow foot. Which for me is a big, big improvement over the previous models. Size-wise, I went through the size with my usual UK6 and it was spot on. That's all good and well then. But one of the biggest frustrations with the previous Evo Power was that the toe box split so fast that it made Royce and Bellerin look slow. Thankfully, Puma knew, and they slapped a protective piece of silicone on the toe box to protect it. And so far, so good with no splitting whatsoever. And also, despite the upper being relatively soft, it doesn't seem to stretch or lose shape over time. And Puma even took the effort to cover up the only seam on the heel to protect it as well. And okay, they claim it's for stability, which it clearly does nothing for, but still. The sole plate has also seen an upgrade with a new gradual stability frame construction that has a smoother flex to it and a new stock configuration to give you more stability when you strike. It all moves very well with a good amount of grip and is great to turn in. But the soft forefoot also means that you don't necessarily feel like you saying bolt when you accelerate. Okay, so let's get it out of the way. Do you get more power in the Evo Power? Well, while it might sound a bit like a fairy tale story, science says yes, as your foot will generate more power when it's allowed to bend naturally. And while I do believe in science, I don't really see or feel that much of a difference in actual shooting power compared to, say, a Magista. But because of the fact that the AccuFoam takes away a bit of the sting when you strike the ball really hard, I somehow found myself more likely to really put my foot through the ball. So striking hard feels better, but mesh will be more power? No. The AccuFoam also affects the touch. Because while your foot is extremely close to the ball, the softness of the foam again adds this light feeling to the touch. And while it's not as surgically precise as it is on the 1.2, because of the low toe box, you still get nothing in the way. So it feels natural in a padded way. And grip text, I almost forgot. It's not something I really noticed that much, but to be honest, I'd rather have it than not. Just don't expect to become Fabregas in his prime because of it. But despite performing and feeling extremely well, I'm not completely, utterly can't live without it in love 
with the Evo Power 1.3. The only performance-related issue I have is the tongue always moving and then the lockdown. I could have done with more, but what really struck me is the way the boot feels in hand. It hasn't gotten that rock star sex appeal look and it both smells and feels quite synthetic. And that's a shame because kick-ass tech like this that feels like a million should draw a big crowd and get a lot of attention. And that is the Evo Power's biggest challenge, because performance and comfort-wise, it's up there with the best. It's considerably cheaper than the other top models, and while it doesn't have the suave elegance of a Mercurial, it delivers big time and is awesome on the ball. But because it is Puma, it might not get all the attention and hype it should. And that's a tad bit sad, because it really, really deserves it.